I'm here to um, provide a witness, a witness to God's love for me and the, the God I've come to know in my own life. I think that's the only sermon anybody has to preach or any story that's the only story they've got to tell. Uh, I've always said that if, you know, gay and lesbian people live their lives with such joy um, in the risen Christ, uh, then in the end, no one will be able to deny uh, God's love for us and God's blessing on us. I, I guess the other reason I'm here is that I'm just not willing to let these guys meet, and it's the guys that I'm worried about, not the girls. Uh, the, the guys, um, I'm not let, willing to let them meet and pretend we don't exist. They have taken vows to serve their flock. And every single one of them has gay and lesbian, bisexual and transgendered people in their flock. And they are, are called and they have promised to care for them. And, and uh, judging from the amount of anxiety my presence has generated, um, I think just my, my simply being here um, is that reminder. The last 24 hours has been actually very hard. Uh, and, um, you know, I've, I've been pretty faithful in not saying intemperate things and uh, not flying off the handle and uh, giving my enemies the benefit of the doubt. But this last 24 hours has been really challenging for me. I thought I was prepared for it and um, it still comes as a surprise. So the Eucharist always helps me. Um, and I think when, when Christians gather and, and uh, share in the body and blood of Christ, um, it, it, it always takes us in the right direction. I will be praying with my whole heart in this service for, for the bishops, for the Anglican Communion, for the Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, I have nothing but, but great hopes for them. Uh, although the fact that I would refer to them as them and not us, that's the painful part of this for me. Because it, it, it feels like that there is a, a, a rather concerted effort to wall me off. Um, I, you know, I just learned something this morning that um, on Tuesday afternoon, each of the provinces of the communion, the 38, you know, national churches, will be gathering as their own house of bishops. And um, at least at the moment, I'm not being permitted to meet with my own house of bishops. Um, I don't know if that decision is going to be changed or not, but back in March, I said to the to, to the House of Bishops at the meeting at Camp Allen, um, please don't let them divide us this way. And um, so it, if that holds and I'm not permitted onto the grounds to meet with my own House of Bishops, um, I'm going to have to pray long and hard. I'm sort of in this uh, funny place where I try to interpret the church to the LGBT community and the LGBT community to the church. Um, and, 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 I, and I say to, to the, that community, don't, don't give up on us, the church, because uh, we've got a whole lot of people trying to get it right. Them and um, right and it's the, uh, and the nature of an institution and certainly the nature of the church to change slowly. That's actually a good thing, um, but it's not an easy thing, and and the church isn't a safe place uh, everywhere. It's safe in some places, and that's where I recommend that people, you know, look look for that kind of oasis of safety. They won't find it in every one of our churches, and I don't think God will be happy until every one of God's churches is a safe place for everybody. I wrote a piece um, for the, I, I think it may be the first issue of the newsletter that, that the, 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 all the LGBT groups together are putting together here, I believe. Um, and it's on the, the bishop as evangelist. And uh, I actually do a lot of evangelism in my work. And it, it occurred to me in writing, in writing the, uh, the piece that uh, a lot of bishops spend all their time preaching to the choir. 
to the already converted. But, but in my role, I actually get to preach, speak, talk with a lot of unchurched people, either people who, who have never been a part of the church or those who have been hurt so badly by the church that they left it a long time ago. And, um, you know, I, uh, just uh, two nights ago I, I um, spoke over at this little parish, St. Rumwald's Parish. Out this, um, uh, they've been worshiping there since 786 A.D. But, you know, the building is newer than that. It's only a thousand years old. And, um, and afterwards, a man came up to me, and, and he was crying so hard, he, he really couldn't say much, except to say that he had left the church 12 years ago because it had hurt him so badly. And, and for the first time, he thought there might be hope for him to come back. That is not an uncommon experience for me. And my sense is that there are, there are people out there, not just LGBT people, but people who are, are looking f for the church to be an institution that actually bespeaks the love they, they think God is. But the church has talked them out of that and b by its own behavior. And so I get to do a lot of evangelism. I get to be in, a, in places where there are a lot of people who have either left the church or, or who have never been a part of the church. And um, that's one of the most thrilling things I get to do. It's hard for me to imagine that, that God would be happy with the exclusion of anyone.